Hello, in today's lesson, I'm going to go over uh, how to construct a marginal distribution and conditional distribution for quantitative variables. In the previous lessons, uh, 4.1 to 4.3, we we're working with a um, quantitative variable. Um, we we find uh, look at association and correlations for quantitative variables. So today, we're going to do the qualitative variable. OK, let's take an example. A professor at a community college in New Mexico conducted a study to as assess the effectiveness of a delivering an instructory introductory statistic course of, with three different methods. One is traditional lecture method, online delivery, meaning that cl no classroom instruction, and then a hybrid of these two methods. So the great student received in the end of the course would a tally, tally, find the frequency margin distribution for the course grade and delivery method. So we want the frequency marginal distribution, right? So let's look at the table below. So here, note, the table refer to contingency table or two-way table. Notice that horizontally we have, uh, on the row here, we have traditional class, online class, and hybrid class. And vertically, we list the grades that uh, for a student to possible grades, A, B, C, D, E, F. Now, meaning the rows is gray and the column is delivery method. So, for marginal distribution of a variable uh, is a frequency or relative frequency. So, it could be a frequency or it could be relative frequency distribution for either the row or the column in the contingency table. This is the contingency table. We're going to complete the row column and the uh, row total and the column total to get a frequency and relative frequency. And those are called marginal distribution. We're going to do both. So for A, we're going to do the frequency. And then for B, I'm going to do the relative frequency. Right? So let's do A first. Notice that we have uh, for traditional tra traditional class, and notice that this is the student who get an A. 36 students receive A, 52 students get a B, 57 get a C. And 46 get D, 46 get F. That's how many students who are taking traditional class and getting different grades here. And similarly for hybrid for the online class and the hybrid class, those are the grades we see for each different grades. And if you calculate the column total, let me write it. The top column total gives me the total for uh, how many students who are taking traditional class. So if I add up 36 plus 52 plus 57, plus 46, and then plus 46, we'll get 237. And this, how many students who are taking the traditional class? Similarly, if I can add up the total in the online column, can I give me the total number of students who are taking online class, which is 254. And then I can do the same thing for the hybrid, 252. So when you add up all the 237, 254, and 252, I'm going to grant total of uh, 743. The 743 is the total number of students who participated in the three classes, total number of students in the three classes together. Now, let me add up the row total. Now, the row total is the number of students who get an A in all across three classes. So 36 get an A for the traditional, 39 get an A for online classes, for the online class and the hybrid class, 24 students get an A. So add them up, there's number of students who get an A in all three classes. So this will be 99, you add it up. And if I add up 52, 55, 66, you get 173. And similarly, I can compute a total for CDF, which is 215, 125, and 131. Now, if I would add up the 99 uh, plus 173 plus 215 plus 125 plus 131, also going to give you 743, and that's called a grand total. So this is the marginal frequency distribution and for, uh, for the, uh, the categorical data here. All right, let's look at the relative frequency marginal distribution, which is second table. Now, for this one here, um, to look at relative frequency, I need to calculate the is equal to the row total for the row number, meaning this number over here is in a row, right? Equal to the row total over the grand total. Now the grand total is seven hundred forty-three, 
and the row total we got it from the previous one here so 99 will be the first row total so 99 over the grand total 743 is gonna give me the relative frequency for the first row so I have uh, the row total which is um, 99 over the grand total 743 I will get 0.133 Okay, let me show you on the calculator. So the row total for the first row, which is the total number of students who get an A in all three classes is 99. And the total number of students in the study is uh, 743. Okay, so when I divide it, notice that if I round to three decimal place, which is 0 0.133. And similarly, I can do the row total for the second uh, row, which is 173 over the grand total, which is 743, and which is going to give me the second uh, row total, which is 0.233 approximately. At this point, I'm going to please uh, pause the video and complete this table yourself. All right, I hope that you have uh, done it. And so let's check your answer. So if I do the third one, the third one will be 215 over 743. You can get point. Point uh, two eight nine. The next one is point one six eight. The next one is point one seven six. Again, so let's get an idea what it means. Now, remember in the previous table we said nine in all three classes together, the total number of students who get an A uh, A grade at the end of the semester is ninety nine. But instead of saying 99 students get an A, our 743, I said, well, our 743 of them, the proportion of students who get an A for the class, for the all three class together is 13.133 or 13.3 percent. Similarly, I can say 23.3 percent of students got a B for all three classes together. So B students are 52, 55, 66. Total is 173. So instead of saying 173 students get an B for all three classes together, I can say the proportion of students who got a B for all three classes it, together is 0.233. So this is the proportion, which is a relative frequency, in other words, relative frequency. All right? Now let's do the uh, column, uh, to column frequency. All right? So for the column one, it's very similar. Instead of using, we're going to use the column total over the grand total. Again, the grand total is the one in the total number of students in the study, which is 743. Right? So I'm going to use the row to column total over the grand total. It's going to give me the uh, relative frequency for the column here. So uh, first one is 237. So 237 over 743 is going to give me 0 0.319. Similarly, I can do 254 over 743, gonna give me 0 0.342, and then 252 over 743 is gonna give me 0 0.339. Okay, now, if I would add up the, uh, the proportion in the row here, like 0 0.319 plus 0 0.342 plus 0 0.339, I would get total one. Because remember, total uh, proportion is one or total probability is one, right? So therefore, you should have one here. Now, let's, let's take a look at what that each one means. Well, the point in uh, for this uh, three different method here, for the number of students who take the traditional class is 237. So our 743 students, 237 of them take the traditional class. Now, in proportion, I can say our 700, the proportion of students who take the traditional class is 31.9 percent or 0 0.319. Uh, so instead of saying 237 students take the traditional class, I can say uh, 0.319 student uh, of the students take the traditional class. So we express that using a relative frequency. So that's called relative frequency marginal distribution table here. Now for the col the total here in the column here, same thing. We add it up. You also get one, which the t meaning the total of 743 represent that as a whole thing, right? So I can, in, let's say, interpret, uh, let's interpret this number over here. Now, 0 0.176, meaning that in this study, out of uh, 743 students, the proportion of students who have an F in all three classes together 
is 0.176, right? So that's marginal frequency distribution. Now let's look at the last one, okay? The last one, conditional uh, distribution. List the relative frequency of each category of the response variable given a specific value of the explanatory variable in the contingency table. Construct a conditional distribution for the coarse gray by method of delivery, common on any type of association that may exist between coarse gray and delivery method. So the goal of the study is to look at which delivery method is more effective, for example, right? So based on based on this study here, is it the traditional class effect more of, uh, compared to the online class, hybrid class? Which one of those methods is uh, effective, more effective compared to the other two? So in the end, this one here, the end gonna tell me which one is better in other words, better in a sense that more students passing the class, right? So to construct conditional distribution, we need a shell number, the number here, let me highlight it, over the column total. So let me look at, tell you what I mean. So for example, I notice that I get a 0.95 answer, 0.095 answer here given to you. Now, to get this number, I need to look at the corresponding cell, which is up in the first number in the first table here. The corresponding cell here, this is 24. So 24 students get an A in the hybrid class. There's a fourth row, right, under here. The cell number over the column total. The column total is 252. So 24 over 252 is going to give me the number over here. So let me write it. So 24, let me do a little star over here. So 24 over um, 252, and you're going to get approximately 0 0.095. And that's how you get the conditional uh, the number here in for this number. So 0 0.095. Now in the same manner, I can do the rest of them. Let's do one more. Let's say so the cell number, this one is the second column, first number. So second column, first number is 39. So 39 over the column total, which is uh, 254. So 39 over 254 is going to give me the next number in the corresponding location. So let me write, so if we have, uh, let me write, once again, 39 over 254. Then you should get 0.154. Let me use a different color. In the same manner, I can say if I give the first uh, total 36 over 237, 36 over uh, 237 is gonna give me uh, the first number in the first row, which is 0 0.152. Okay, uh, please pause the video and try to complete this table. All right, I hope that you pause the video and you complete it. Now let me uh, write the answer and you can check. Okay, I hope you can, you can uh, com uh, compare. Now notice that I finished the conditional distribution. That, so to make this table, I need only the conditional distribution, marginal distribution, the very first table. So 39 over 254, give me this num number here, here and then 36 over uh, 237 gonna give me the number over here in each row. So basically, and to do the second row, I can do the same thing. I can say 52, 52 over uh, 237 is gonna uh, give me 0 0.219, right? So those are how you get the number in each shell. All right, now let's interpret them. Type association, now this allows me to interpret association. Again, think about what I want to know. I want to know which class is more effective. Well, you know, in terms of passing grade, right? Passing grade, we say is A, B, or C. So I want to know the, the which of these three classes gonna give me the have most student passing. Of course, when we assess, you know, in the equal, this have similar level of difficulty of the exam, etc. So the class with the most student pass will be the most effective, I would say. So passing meaning A, B, or C. So we can calculate the proportion of students who pass in the class in each one of them. I mean, I can add it up. So I can add up 0.152 plus 0.219 plus 0.241. Add it up, I get 0.612. 
okay i can do the same thing for the this three the for online class for online class if i add up this, the first three of them which is proportional student who get an a proportional student get a b plus proportional student who get a c gonna give me 0.639 and then for the hybrid class, I can add it up again. The proportional student get an A, which is 0 0.095, plus the proportion who get a B, which is 0 0.262, plus the proportional student who get a C, which is 0.357, gonna give me 0 0.741. Now notice that the, the class that has the most student passing, which is more than 74%, is the hybrid class. So based on this, the data set here, I can say the hybrid class is the most effective. So to answer the question, I say it appears a student in the hybrid class are more likely to pass with A, B, or C than the other two methods, which are traditional and online. Okay. So by looking at the proportion here, I can compare a student who took the hybrid class now, what proportion actually passing, right? So, online class about 63.9% uh, pass, for traditional class about 61.2% uh, of student pass. So, if I want to look at uh, individual grade, so which one has the highest one, get an A, notice that for the hybrid, the proportion you get an A actually is the lowest in the other three, but in terms of total who passing, this one has the highest, right? Well, thank you for watching the video. I'll see you next time.